Okay, a little bit delayed, but we are here on the Art of Inspired live stream to talk today with my guest, Chella Dinkoy. And what she's going to do is she's going to talk to us a little bit about understanding your messaging. And I need to silence my phone here as we get into this. We're going to talk about uh, a little bit of a worksheet so that you know how to position yourself, the two most important things that she's going to talk and how she works with her clients. And please, as always, post your comments, post any questions that you have in the live stream, and we'll make sure to answer them. And we'll get back to you. If there's anything we can't answer, I'm sure that we'll drop that information down in the comments of the show. So let me get started by welcoming my guest, Chala. And I'm going to, Chala, don't let me forget, I need to find out where what your nationality is and where that beautiful name comes from. But I'm going to read her biography. She's the CEO and founder of the Repositioning Expert. She, which is a division of Coast Tactics. I'm going to pull this over, guys. I got to look at you here. Um, she helps professional service companies change their messaging to attract more decision makers. In her former life, Chella was an award-winning marketer at companies such as Pepsi, Pizza Hut, Frito-Lay, Di Diago, I'm in San Diego, Diago, Playtex, and Bic Inc. for 20 years. Now she's a marketing consultant, the author of Gentle Marketing, a gentle way to attract loads of clients and how to win friends the way Apple wins customers. In addition, Chala is a regularly featured expert on major television networks such as ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, as well as a popular speaker at international conferences. So I met Chala through some uh, Facebook groups that we're both uh, a, a member of. I've been uh, honored to be in one of her challenges, and I'm going to bring her on today to polish out that information that I maybe left out a little bit. So, hi. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. Let's make sure that we can get into the chat here. Okay. Somebody says I'm late. Well, guess what? So are we. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are. We really are. That That's awesome. a never. Yes, so we're here, we're here, we're ready. Chella, thank you so much for being flexible with me to make this work out for both of us. I want to deliver your val valuable information out to the audience, so thank you for being here and being a gracious guest on the Art of Inspired Selling. So as all guests, I like to find out, you know, how long have you been an entrepreneur now? Oh, it's coming on to eight years. Okay. So in those eight years, you've had some ups and some downs and some backward somersaults, I'm sure, as we all do as entrepreneurs. What inspires you? What inspires you to get up, get the job done, get on the, you know, I like to say that hamster wheel of life that makes, you know, you make life happen for you and not to you. Tell me a little bit about that. Is that a, a person, a book, a quote, your, your son? Tell me what drives you. I've got so many things, but... Honestly, when it comes down to it, and I've been in the fetal position, you know, in a dark basement crying kind of thing about twice during those eight years. And uh, I came close during COVID to being in one of those positions. But and I wish I knew what really did drive me. But it's always like, who are you? Who are you going to be in this situation? And one of them was when I was in t TV uh you know, training to go on TV. And our coach was like one of these, you know, beat up, beat up the athlete kind of coaches. So he was like beating us all up. And, and I was like in the fetal position. And at the time, my, my husband said, you know, just come home. Like he said, just come home. I was literally, you know, and I just I it, that was the moment where I said to myself, like, do am I the kind of person that goes home? And, you know, and then that's what stopped me. Like there was nothing to stop me. And that's when I, I stepped up and the same thing happened during COVID. You know, I used to speak at all the conferences. That was my funnel. And mm -hmm. I had to do like, like your um, expertise, which is the social selling piece. And I, I've had so, such tremendous growth during 2020, Catherine. I don't know what your life's been like, but it's, it's like night and day, night and day. And so, yeah, I don't know what keeps me going. I wish I did. But it's just that I, I like I, I can't. I'm too proud to to give up or something. Well, it sounds like it's a self-driven, yeah, um, something that you know that's that's a quality that entrepreneurs must have. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to have this self-driven quality of I'm. There's something bigger in this world that I'm supposed to do, 
it's, you know, I can have my down day. It's the somebody out there is depending on me. I have a gift. I have something to deliver and I'm going to deliver it. And I'm, you know, they just have no idea what's coming. So, uh -huh. you know, that's just something that self-driven, maybe a type personalities tend to have as well. Apparently, I wish I knew some days it drives me nuts. You know? <laughs> right, we bottle it, sell it. Yeah. If it was a potion. I know, I know, yes. for sure. For sure. Well, welcome to the to live stream. You, you know, as I mentioned, what we do here is we deliver value to the audience. Um, I interview um, subject matter experts. My audience are B2B entrepreneurs or solopreneurs that are, you know, at that level. Maybe they're at 200, 250,000. They're getting ready to bust through the roof. They need some tips. They need small bite-sized things that they can deliver. I'm sorry, that they can implement in their business daily to make things happen. And, you know, they could potentially be a marketing person. They could be a tech person that doesn't have the selling skills. So I believe your, your subject matter um, expertise and the things that you have are really relevant today especially now that we really have to make that impact on video, right? Uh, because that's the world we're living in today. Mm -hmm. So so tell me a little bit about yourself. I read your bio. Anything yeah. that, that I left out in that about um, a, maybe a small backstory or what you're doing today to have such a successful yeah. 2020? And then we'll get into delivering that value that you're going to deliver to the audience. So uh, 2020 is a year like a work in pro progress. Like, I don't want you to think that it's all rosy, but I've definitely found the way I really feel so much better than the first half of COVID where I was really in that fetal position, but now I feel reborn. And I know, I know where the money's coming from and it's already started to come in. But the backstory is I was at corporate girl for 18 years. I spent 18 years saying no to suppliers because I worked for sexy brands like Pepsi, Pizza Hut, Diageo, which by the way is you know, the owner of Smirnoff, uh, you know, Bailey's, Tanqueray. Or... I should know that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Uncle Tito is my favorite right now. I don't know who owns oh, that brand. No, but... no, no, we, we didn't own that one. But so, I mean, did you ever work in the corporate world, Catherine? Oh, yes. Yes. Right. For, for sure. For 30 years. Oh, so you did too. Okay. So, I mean, if we've talked about this, you know that it's like most of the time, if you're in any purchasing role, First of all, your hands are tied because of all these rules around purchasing. And it, when you're at Pepsi and you work in marketing, that your hands are even more tied because everybody wants you and like everybody wants to work for you. They're pitching you nonstop. So when I looked at the people that I did end up hiring mm -hmm. and that did get in through the door, there were some there were very specific things that they had and that they did and said that I now teach to clients to help them get into the uh, you know big companies. So that's what I do now is I fix what people are saying to get in to other businesses because the corporate buyers right now dur during COVID, all sorts of research is telling us they're buying online, they're online and they're buying online. So the, almost the middleman, which is a sales rep is gone. Yes. It's gone. Unfortunately, that role is like gone. Yes. So they need to figure out if they haven't figured out what I figured out during COVID, which is how to sell online and how to break through with your messaging online in a very quick and concise way, like what you're saying, they're going to be in a world of trouble. And, and, so I came from the healthcare industry and most of the healthcare sales representatives that, you know, companies can have 80, 100, 2000 sales reps. They're grounded right now. Oh, so yeah. they're all they are struggling. They're wondering, what am how am I going to do this? What am I going to do? Like what they know how to do overnight disappeared. Yeah. Right. Exactly. They they can't show up. The, they're not being seen. And it's not just well, the medical industry is billions, right? So that's yeah. a that's a lot of reps that are yeah. displaced and they don't quite know what to do. Yeah. So it's, it's companies that are employing social selling and they're employing something that's an outbound or inbound lead generating strategy. Those are the people, if they nailed it, that are going to maintain that income during this period of time. Absolutely. And that's why it's so important. Uh, what I'm finding is people are spending more money on marketing than any other operational issue because they need to stand out more with what they're doing now than they ever did before because it's a smaller spend pool. So they, they have to get it right. Mm -hmm. And 
it's like a make or break right now for people because it's it's not going to get better in the next month or two. Right. It's going to take a while for it to get back to the rosy because so many people that you talk to, their businesses were like, I, like mine, I had a record year last year. I like, I never once had to do any lead gen, nothing. I just, I didn't even pick up the phone once. I would just close the people that came and, you know, had a record year. So that world is going to be a while to come back. But I think if I never have to get on a plane, you know, hey. I it, know. And right? I, as moms as well, there's so yeah. much I've missed in my kids' yeah. lives from being a road warrior and traveling. And, yeah. and I mean, not to interrupt you, but I, I just yeah. did a corporate piece with a company. And um, it was I was talking to the trainer and and part the the sales trainers were spending their time in the field. Right. So they traveled to work with a rep. They'd maybe see two people during the day if they were well-planned appointments. And then the next day, maybe two people. And so how much money did that cost and how many days of traveling and how efficient was that? Where now, through uh, this new world, they can be so much more efficient. They don't have to get on airplanes as much. They can train 10 reps in a day, you know, or eight reps in a day and not two or one. So yeah, life is going to change for people. It's really interesting. Absolutely. And I love it. I, I actually, I think this was the right thing for me going forward because I was so tired of traveling, but it, it, it just, it pushed me, right? I, mm -hmm. I, I was like resisting it, but it pushed me because I mean, comfort, right? I was comfortable in, in the familiar. Yes. But still, we're going to want to see your beautiful face on a stage as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I mean, you know, when they're, when people are gathering, I don't know, are they gathering? Are they doing that? They're some that that are starting to uh, i i know that there was in san diego i'm in uh, this mastermind group they got together at the end of june they're getting together again at the end of uh, october so there's some small things that are happening yeah but like the the kind of uh conferences that i would go to catherine it would be like thousands mm -hmm. thousands of people so i'd be speaking at those you know breakout rooms and if you have five thousand people at a con it's like it, it's insane the number, and so I can't. I can't even imagine five thousand people gathering. Like, and, and would we want to be there? Yeah, that's the other question. Right. Um, I think there was a, a tech conference somewhere. Was it in Las Vegas that in February that they traced a whole bunch of um, you know COVID cases that they then traveled from every country because it was such a huge tech conference and. So that, that's what I was reading about. And it's just kind of scary, but let's yeah. talk about good things. Let's talk about what we can do and what we can yeah. control. Okay. Absolutely. So tell me what you're going to teach today to the audience so that they yeah. can be able to have perfect on point messaging and turn those um, leads into, or actually just the casual people they're meeting yeah. into actual leads and customers. Right. So what I'm going to teach you is a growth strategy. Okay. So it's, it's uh, a growth strategy called super niching. So you can use this growth strategy uh, if you want to repivot what you're already doing because it's not working or what you're already doing is working, but not well enough. So you can grow like an extra arm to, to sell more. So that's what a super niche is for. And what it is, is, Finding your super niche is finding a very specific industry target and marrying that with being a specialist in a very specific pain point that they have. So typically when you niche, you you know are an expert in one area of either an industry or a, uh, a topic. Mm -hmm. so what I'm suggesting is that you do both so that you get really small and focused as an additional revenue. And I'll give you some examples. For example, uh, one of my clients said, I don't know, like you came to the training, but I don't remember if you stayed long enough to see some of the testimonials. Okay, I didn't at the okay. end. Okay, so yeah, so it was, I think this was the fifth day. So Jill Williams, she owns an IT support company. So IT, IT companies are like a dime a dozen. Yes. Um, you know, when you, when you meet one, your eyes probably roll to the back of your head, like, especially at these procurement conferences that I go to, there's, there's so many of them. And it's interesting that you brought that topic up because I've had conversations with IT people and that service or support or networking, hardware, software, whatever they're doing. And I say to them, so who's your target market? Anyone. 
Yeah. Anyone with a brick and mortar store. Okay. I'm like, okay, slow down a little bit. Anyone <laughs> in, like, who's your main client? Oh, okay. I, I have some restaurants. Okay. We're getting better. Right. So yeah. In that IT service industry, I hear that. Who can yeah. you Anyone with a store. Anyone with a store that's not a big chain. Yeah. I mean, so that was one. So this was a B2B one that anyway, it was, uh, they were they were trying to grow and they were about I think she was saying four to five million, and uh, so they they wanted to grow because they had lost some clients. So what we did is we super niched them into uh, helping call centers for healthcare for like hospitals reduce the wait time, and we sub branded the super niche and we called it on hold rescue. And they even had cute little logos with the you know operator with mm -hmm. a uh you know the cross sign of the medical cross sign on it so it was called on hold rescue because apparently statistically there's a lot of people who get sicker because they can't get through because they're kept on hold too long and what the it company does is it um, makes solutions like i don't know programming whatever they do magic they produce something to reduce the wait time because they're they're helping schedule it better schedule the people better do the the whole workflow better so mm -hmm. it's so jill the the ceo they made she was telling me and it's actually in my social media now because we taped it uh we recorded her um live she made eight hundred and five thousand dollars in two months after figuring that out and it took us like it took us two months to figure that out and within that two months she was able to go and cross sell it to an existing client because it's a super niche. So remember what I was telling you that a super niche helps you get more money from existing clients. Well, that's exactly what they did. That's and, awesome. And so like, uh, so was that 805 incremental dollars? Yeah, incremental. Yeah. Okay. So that's the whole idea. It's like, it's just incremental, but the rest of our business was still going. Right. Um, let me tell you about a situation where it completely changed, like the whole pivot, right? So a generic marketing strategy agency, uh, they, we super niche them into helping food manufacturing companies. You know, the cookie lady, the soup, you know, guy, they make their um, little organic foods, but mm -hmm. they can never get into distribution. Like they can't get into grocery stores. Whole Foods has enough and they don't want. So what, what we super niched um, this company into was to help get them listed and to stay listed. Because the thing about, if you know the food, like the grocery business, you can get listed and pay your brains out for the listing fees, but then they delist you if it doesn't move fast okay. enough. Cause that room, especially like places like Walmart, they have it down to a cent how much a place on the shelf huh? exactly so um so that's what um the the company uh name became the um, food distribution guy.com and he went from a zero to i think seven new contracts in the first year uh you know multiple five-figure contracts and uh to this day he's still like the number one search even though he does zero seo because the food distribution was the search words for that industry. So you can see how a super niche gets you um, in front of a very specific audience and in talks, you talk about their very specific pain point. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the, um, the whole idea is that, uh, the way we get to that, and I'm sure you, you saw this on the first night that we did the uh, the elevator pitch boot camp, is first we have to get you into to look at a whole list of industries and interest groups that you're going to target. And you score them according to whether it's a good fit for you, your skill set background, and then uh, the ability, whether they can pay your fees that you want, mm -hmm. and the access to check, check signers. Like, do you have check signers of that industry in your natural networks, or can you get in front of them because they're, they are around enough in events. So then, you know, we get clients to score them. And in the exercise now, I want to invite at the end, we regularly have these boot camps. So the next one is coming up uh, on the 21st of September, and I'll give you the link to sign up for that later. But so it, we have uh, the homework for that first night is around figuring out this industry niche, that that very specific niche. Maybe I should have pulled out my, uh, I know I have 
sheet somewhere. But yes, <laughs> keep talking. I'll look for my work. Okay, it looks like this. Ta-da! Yes, 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 sure. yes. Yep. And so, so for the, those of you who don't have it, yeah, uh, you'll get it. You know, if you sign up for the boot camp, and uh, it'll make more sense to you. But basically, we're trying to score the industry. And do you remember if you did that homework? Like, what did it score for you? Like, what was the highest scoring industry? Do you remember? No, I didn't. I didn't do it. I I did start to fill it out, but I didn't. Oh, I was overwhelmed. We're gonna, yeah. Oh no, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. But we'll we'll polish your pitch uh, at the end. Okay. So the second part of what I teach around how to pick the super niche is how to pick your sweet spot specialty. And what I want you to do is I want you to think about the fact that 70% of uh, humans purchase based on pain and only 30% purchase based on improving something. So all of our messaging, all of our positioning is based on solving the problem. And Absolutely. So yeah. the message is about the problem, right? And then three ways to find out, right? One is you can go up, go and ask the decision maker of the industry, is this a relevant pain point that I'm guessing or what is the pain point? Yay! Oh, good for you. You're such a good student. Well, hey, go through it again on the 21st and this time you can do it like a pro. Yes, yes. And we're going to yes. have a lot of hot seats where we're going to polish on the air. So, but I'm going to polish you now, but if you want to come back after for sure. So the first way you ask about the pain is you, you just ask them, right? Horse's mouth kind of thing. Mm -hmm. the second is you Google it, like you can literally Google industry problems 2020. And believe me, you can probably find out a lot, especially during COVID now, a lot of industries are in a lot of pain, but I want you to get very specific about the most expensive pain. And then um, you can ask, Let's there. let's go for, yeah. for that one sec. So yeah. the most expensive pain. So that you really have to pull that out of the target market, right? Like emotionally expensive, financially expensive, or just top of mind. Like, is it taking up too much brain space for them to be able to get to move past it? Which which, which that's, pain? That's an excellent question. So when it's B to B, it's money. Okay, so it has to be actual money expensive. If it's B to C. It's emotional. Make sense? Yes, and I'm happy I'm not in B to C. <laughs> I'm not doing. I'm not. I'm not good with dealing with emotions. Okay. No, exactly because you know, so emotional could go all the way to health, to death. To yes. Death, right. And yes. So with B to C clients, although I mainly do B to B, but like for example, um, I had a wealth advisor. I may have told you about this. And she literally couldn't get anyone to talk to her. She couldn't get new clients because money, you know, this is very personal. Mm -hmm. Like people don't want to talk to strangers that they meet at a networking event about their finances because they're embarrassed or, you know, they're ashamed or whatever. They're, they're private. So imagine if you're a wealth advisor and you're trying to go after a certain target of, you know, like. Um, not exactly divorced women yeah. or whatever they're looking yeah, for. Right? That's exactly what we did. We super niched her in divorcing women. And, and now what she was doing and the number one problem we found, do you know what number one problem is for divorcing women around money? Uh, they don't know what yeah. the ones that I found. They really don't know. Maybe they weren't managing those finances and they didn't know how deep they needed to dig in. And, and they also don't have a, re, a, a reality around they want to keep the house, but they don't understand how much money it's really going to take to keep it. So they yeah. might not have a holistic understanding about their, their finances. Yeah, their finances. So the number one fear, that was the symptom, what you're talking about. But the, okay. the ultimate, the consequence of the fear was to lose their the level of their lifestyle. Yeah. Yes. That's what we focused on as the messaging is maintain your lifestyle after the divorce. And so we found out that there's 22 meetup groups for divorcing women in Toronto alone. So it was a very natural place for her to go and network. She herself had been divorced. She was remarried, but uh, she gave, you know, talks at these meetups. She gave talks at her church and these women before, when she used to have to run after them, these women started running after her. Yes. Yes. So that's what this is about is this sweet spot specialty pain is you either ask them and when it's a, an industry, you go and you actually can talk to their suppliers, their other suppliers, and you can talk to their customers. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and when it's a retail uh, experience, you go and count shelves. So if they're a consumer good, you can literally tell by their market share just how many how many um, and you can go to different types like you can go to go a Costco, which is a warehouse type versus a Walmart, which versus like a Trader Joe's. So you can go to different kinds and count them. We used to do that with clients all the time. Um, so what I what I want people to do if you're listening to this, you guys, is I want you to write down three assumed pain points for that industry target that you um, did the scoring on. And then I want you to go and talk to at least one decision maker in that industry and then ask them which of the three is if they had one last dollar to spend what they would spend it on today. And believe me, it has changed for a lot of them. It has changed. So that that is the homework that we give for the second night. And then the third night, which I don't know if you got to, which is the fun part where we're going to polish your pitch. Well, pitch. I, I wrote my little note, right? If you had to spend your last dollar, where would you spend it? Oh, my yes. God. And did you come up? Did you come up with a phone point or did you get that far? No, that was my last note. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, hey, listen. Your priority is making money, so I get it. But there's always going to be a chance for you to come back every month. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. The niche elevator pitch formula is uh, you the target that you help, so who you help, mm -hmm. plus the problem that you solve, plus yep. how you help. Okay. Yes. And those, those are the three things that I do when I, when I rewrite my uh, LinkedIn profiles for people Perfect. and they, that's the headline formula I use for them. Who do you work with? Um, what's the outcome of working with you and what problem do you solve? So Perfect. that's the framework for people yeah. that we use when we do a LinkedIn headlines. That's great. So now to enhance the effectiveness, there's, here's a trick and maybe you want to use this, add a statistic of the pain and the result of working. So you already add the result. So add a stack, stack for the pain. So here, let me give you an example is, and this is on the workbook, three out of four business owners never get asked for their information or a business meeting after they do their elevator pitch to their prospect, to their target client. And what I do is I fix what they're saying so that every time they open their mouth, they get an appointment. So that's the result, right? That they get an appointment every time. And the pain is they never get asked. And the stat is three out of four, which is almost everyone. Yes. And what I do is I fix what they're saying. So let's do, let's craft your elevator pitch. So okay. give, give me yours and then I'll see if I can polish it. Maybe it's already perfect. Well, I have the great example of my live show, right? Okay. That elevator pitch is that um, I, the art of inspired selling is where I bring six and seven figure business owners on to deliver value so that B2B entrepreneurs cannot just um, survive during this now normal or new normal. They actually can survive. So that's, that's just the pitch of the show. Okay. Say. And so you do this to six and seven figure business owners, right? Yes. Okay. So what is the number one most expensive problem six and seven figure business owners have that the show solved? It is, well, they're, they're various, right? I'm, I'm focusing on um, helping them generate more revenue. So revenue okay. is the biggest problem. Okay. So how do you- Leads, do leads and revenue. Leads that they can then convert to revenue. Okay, so how do you do that through the show? Through the show, I do that by bringing people like you on that helps okay. them um, pick up small nuggets of wisdom that they can employ in their business today to make a difference. Okay, so uh, if you could, and do I have your permission to polish? Yes. Okay, so if you could uh, maybe put a statistic around uh, how many six and seven figure businesses don't have more leads because they're lacking information, okay. right? Because that's what you, that's the gap that you're filling is that information, right? But, and, and top, top information by top, team, uh, you know, top, top experts in their field. Mm -hmm. So if there could be some, and even, even further, if you, if there could be some metric, if you could do some sort of either informal survey about your listeners being more earning more than non-listeners. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because, yeah. because of the tips that you're giving or because of the experts expertise that you're offering on the show. Okay. 
Does that sound more specific than what you have? It sounds more specific in that. Why would I listen to your show? Yeah, you're going to bring all the, all these people that are, you know, are going to talk about, but really at the end of the day, what am I, right? We're doing this for the audience. What, what am I going to get out of it? Oh, you mean you have some proof that people listened to your show, employed it, and it made a difference and an impact. And, and as a result, they gained five new clients or $5,000. Wow. If they can do it, I can do it. Right. Good. That, that, that is exactly what you want them to think, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly what you want. So that sounds pretty good to me. Uh, you can use that, as you said, in your in a LinkedIn profile or a descriptor of the, you know, the in a podcast kind of format, uh, in a blurb in social media, uh, and when you're introducing it, even um, you know, right off the bat, I think. Right, right. Okay. What's the biggest pain, and why? Why yeah. are we trying to solve this pain? Yeah, and how how we solve it? What it what it what is the pain? Put a size to it with the stat, and then who you already have the who. And then what you do to solve it for what result? Okay, All right. So that's good. Now the the um, the part that I want to talk about is using your niche to land meetings, which is the most important part, right? And um, so the, where you would meet and and remember in marketing, and this is true for marketing during COVID, after COVID, in person, out of person, is there's a seven to twelve touch. Point yes. that's required so that they convert into a client. And how do you touch them? Well, you can be as present as you want, but the way to, to maximize one to many is with your content, which is what you're doing so brilliantly. And the, the difference is that once you're super niched, you're constantly doing it in the world of that industry. And you have to make sure when you choose an industry that it actually has visibility channels like some sort of LinkedIn group, like some sort of uh, now online conferences or networking or training, or, you know, you have to make sure that you can get in front of them. Now, social selling is amazing. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you have like teams of, of hordes of VAs, just like messaging away, which I have a team in the Philippines that does that. And we message people on LinkedIn and most of the time, that's how I get clients. And I, I fill my entire calendar now post COVID with um, introduction meetings, right? Connection meetings. So that is the secret now is to be in front of them. Like not only do they get a message from me, but now they see me in their stream. Then they see me live. Then they see, you know, I send them something that is um, of value to them. We send content that is of value. For them. Yes. Yes. And that's part of our funnel. So that's what we do is we build those funnels for our clients. That's so right. it starts with the connection. It starts with the video. I'm big into video strategy. It starts with the lead gen, whatever that's going to be, um, whatever PDF or checklist or whatever it is. And then ultimately we want to, when it's right, get them on the phone or move the conversation from LinkedIn into email so that we can own that contact just in case there's something that changes. Like if let's say that LinkedIn took away messaging tomorrow, boy, now what, right? Then you needed that content strategy to make sure that people know who you are, because now that's the only way to get their attention and to get into their inbox. I'm curious, what do you think about sales navigator versus LinkedIn? Because I understand that if you discontinue the service with Sales Navigator, all of your messages disappear. Yes. Yeah, so I use uh, I use an automation platform that that um, maintains all of the messages. So we we won't lose them and we won't lose the conversations that that we had. And also, uh, I have a an optimization expert that not just keeps it in the um, platform, but we also move it over into our own custom CRM. So we own the data in a Google database. So we make sure to have it duplicated and um, available with statistics of performance and how things are doing all the time. So we can always strive to be better with our messaging to be better in, in the engagement. Okay. If Are you at liberty to say what the automation software is to capture all the uh, DMs from Navigator and LinkedIn? Yes, actually an affiliate. I don't have my affiliate code, though. I should ask him. No. <laughs> we, use, we use a platform called Skylead, and we've tried a few of them. Um, Skylead. 
Skylead.io. Skylead, like Skylead. Yeah, let me put it in the chat, you guys, so you hear it. Um, uh, Skylead.io. And the reason I like this one is as an agency, I if I'm managing somebody's LinkedIn profile, I can open my dashboard and see everybody's LinkedIn profiles in one place. Mm -hmm. So then I can create tags of follow-up, not follow-up, what needs to happen. I can uh, copy the message into a message to my client and then they can follow up with it. So I can see everything in one command station. That's wonderful. Wow. Yeah. I love it. So this is such a new world to me, but what I do know is how to create the content, what the message has to be to get the attention. And so what I work with on clients, once we figure out the super niche, then we create content around the super niche to position the brand as an expert in that super niche alone. And then, you know, that could look, that could go all the way from having a sub brand with its own landing page, mm -hmm. with its own lead magnets and all of that to just having sort of like a, almost like a silent launch where you just go and talk to your clients about it and you have just a few private links to send them resources around the expertise for that problem. So, yes. But regardless of how you do it, it has to be seven to 12 touches. So you have to focus on it for at least a, just a little bit of amount of time, at least until you um, provide enough or, or build up enough of a database of um, expertise, like content of expertise around it. Yes. And so are you counting seven to 12? Are you counting um, connection message one, message two, um, video, checklist, whatever, third message? And then are you counting taking them into a nurturing sequence as touch points like for four through 12? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's one to one, one, one to many or one to one. It doesn't matter if it's video or audio. It doesn't matter if it's text. What it, the only thing that matters is the, um, the more live it is, of course, you know, like a conversation or like what you and I are doing, the mm -hmm. stronger it is. It's just like it's much easier to close in person than it is on Zoom or on the phone. Right. So it just prolongs it. Uh, and, you know, these are averages. There's no actual, oh, my God, he saw it 12 times and he didn't buy it. What am right. I doing? What am I doing? But, you know, well, are, that goes back to, if you will, the. Um, the awareness spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. Are they unaware? Are they aware? You know, where are they? Not so much on the buyer's journey, but where are they on that awareness spectrum of completely unaware that they even had a problem and didn't know there was a solution to 100% aware, high awareness that not only can you as a brand solve their problem, but now I have high intent to purchase and I'm just negotiating right now the pricing or moving my budget around. So it really just depends. That's why you need all those touches, right? Because it depends on where that person is today and you don't know when they're going to explode and understand I got to have, I, I got to work with her. You know, some of the most expensive decisions I've made to hire coaches were on something happened. Right. And I'm like, mm -hmm. where's her link? Where's that person's name yeah. again? You know, and if they're not in your inbox or if they're not like you are in my um, Facebook chat, mm -hmm. if, if I don't have those people at my fingertips, mm -hmm. then they won't be the ones that I choose. Right. It's the ones when I'm having a hyperventilation moment <laughs> that I need, I need help now. I'm going to spend my money. Where, where's that person? So, yeah. I we all our clients need to be that person. They need to be there in front yeah. of them. Yeah, consistently and professionally and not spamming. <laughs> exactly. And so I call that the um, the centipede moment because that's what I had a centipede moment. Um, and, and that's how I define a brand like a brand is really have the, a brand has done its job if it's able to carve itself into your brain. Mm -hmm. with, what happened when I was pregnant or I, I had just given birth was uh, breastfeeding 2 a.m. in the morning and in South Etobicoke where I live, there's a centipede issue. And so there was a granddaddy of one when I went into the bathroom and flicked on the light and it, a big giant one like just ran over my foot. And you can imagine the first word that came to my mind, it was the name of a pest control company, right? And our pest control company sprays four times a year 
uh, and I hadn't called them. So the brand name Orkin, the Orkin came to my mind, right? I was like, oh my God, I got to call Orkin. So that's what I want for it. That company. would have been my second word. I think there <laughs> might've been some <laughs> profanities. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everybody jokes about that, but, but you know what I mean? So that I, that's what I want for you is I know that you, your brand is established in that niche. If when the client is in pain, your name is the first thing that pops up. I mean, you've heard of businesses that have gone out of business or that have changed phones and they're still getting calls. People have died and they're still getting calls. That's because they're carved into somebody's mind as being an answer to that pain. Yes. Right. And so that's what I, that's what true branding is, is when we can establish that in your mind. And that's what it takes seven to 12 times of being everywhere in their world, which is why I want you to pick a very specific world because I want you to be everywhere in their world. Yes. 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 For me. Well, yes. For you people. Listen. <laughs> great agreement. So that's that's really all I have to, to teach today is all about the super niche. Okay, that's fabulous. So, and we have this wonderful. Um, now, you guys go go at least get the uh, the workbook, right? It's got so much information. We'll have Chala's name here, so you know how to find her. But I love these tips, right? You say steps to connect, join events they go to. How do I find my people? Join events they go to, meetups, right? Uh, event brights. Facebook at events, LinkedIn events, LinkedIn groups, LinkedIn chats, follow where these people are, connect on LinkedIn and email, definitely look for their email address. First, establish a relationship. That's number uh, five on my, my methodology. <laughs> Elevator pitches, you know, don't, don't mess up. <laughs> and it's okay if you do, because you know what? You're going to get another chance. Mm -hmm. And then offer to give more free advice on a quick Zoom call, which is when I have these intake calls to see if people are a good fit for my live show, mm -hmm. I look at my zone of genius, right? I look at their LinkedIn profile. And I get, that's an opportunity for me to say, hey, listen, you don't have a banner. You don't have a call to action. Your LinkedIn profile looks like your resume. How, when was the last time you updated it? Have you thought about adding media to your, you know, oh, I can do that. Oh, yeah, I haven't done that. Oh, my goodness. I'm looking for somebody to help me with that, right? So I wasn't, I, I'm literally giving them ideas and they can't write fast enough. So we always need to be providing that value. And I appreciate that you are in, in that same mindset to come on the show and to add value to my audience. So tell me, when is the next elevator pitch boot camp? Are, so or, it's on the 21st. I don't know if um, you're, if you want to write that down, but it's on the 21st and it's at, you can register and then you'll get that workbook that we're talking about at uh, repositioner.com, which is my website, uh -huh. repositioner.com slash bootcamp. Let me get there, repositioner.com. And then let me go to backslash bootcamp. And then I will put it in the comments. So it will be there for everybody. Yeah, and it's actually nine days. So you didn't stick around, but maybe this time you will. So it's five days of training with four days of bonuses. And uh, then you, you have, you know, live guests and we have hot seats. Oh, there it is. Yep. Uh, it's actually, it's slash bootcamp, but oh, okay. Oh, you're, you've gone to the actual URL. Okay. So it's re the short is repositioner.com slash bootcamp. Yeah. Okay. But that goes there. Yeah. So let's talk about, we're, we're, we're done. We, we've, thank you guys so much for joining us late and for uh, being a part of this, this great uh, conversation. Let's, let's talk one second. Mm -hmm about your funnel and about your ability because you've done such a great job of closing people, right? And building your business and pivoting and where you're doing. Mm -hmm. So you get people in this workshop and you deliver immense amount of, uh, of value, right? You've mm -hmm. got support staff, trust me, I know. You've got people responding to comments and VAs here and all that. <laughs> you get them on your, your boot camp. Mm -hmm. And so does the cream rise to the top? They just say, you know what? I'm overwhelmed. This is enough. I can't do it by myself. I want you to do it. What, what, which people, I know there's always those DIYers that. Yeah. And then never. Yeah. Because you still provide a value to them, right? Yeah. You gave them enough value to do exactly. it for themselves. And they'll say, Hey, I know you should go be in this boot camp, right? Which is what I did. I sent yeah. some people to it. So, and what, what are the other, um, 
revenue generating things that come out of such a, 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 a immense boot camp because this is a lot of time that you do it's, for it's, this. It's really great, but you know the thing is, it's rinse and repeat because once you do it, you do it every month. You become so comfortable and you you improve things. I mean, this is going to be our second time. We've learned so much, Catherine. Oh my god! And um, now what's happening is that. Um, I'm closing sales between launches because the social selling team are so invigorating my LinkedIn um, people, like my connections, but just by reaching out that they, if I've, if they've seen the boot camp and like you remember it, remember getting some value from it and are now ready. That's the whole thing, right? you have to constantly be in front of their face and in conversations with them. And you can't possibly do it on your own. That's why right. you need the social selling agency or somebody to help you continue to do it. Because what you need to be doing is you need to be actually closing sales on those calls and they have to be setting it up for you. Yes. I mean, so that kind we of have to be, doing? Yes. I have to be the CEO of, of the company. Absolutely. I have a uh, online business manager. I have an assistant. I have VAs in the Philippines as well. I have a VA in Pakistan. I have a video editor in Colombia. I have my partner now in uh, Latin America. I just hired another person that's going to manage profiles. I mean, you cannot do it all yourself. No way. I mean, I, I wouldn't even try, but it was such a it's it's really hard to find the right partners too. So those that that was a little bit of a struggle too. But I'm so happy with the results on this one. And once you find someone and you fall in love, like hopefully it's going to be a marriage for good, right? And I'm yes. talking to partners. I'm talking about real marriage, but I'm talking about partners. As well. I do have a relationship coach to the stars that's coming on the show. You'll have to be a part of that one. Are you single? Yes, Are you single? I okay. Yes, single, single women ready to mingle right here. <laughs> this is an I love myself ring. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, um, Perfect. Are you single, Catherine? Yes, I am. I'm single. Perfect. Oh my gosh. That's why you're bringing her on. Let's see what she has to tell us. Yes, she's really interesting. And we're going to go on to do a webinar together um, for women to, to learn about all the different areas. And she brings a little bit of hypnosis in as well to help you understand your inner child. I'm super into that. Uh, we'll have a we'll yeah. have to have another conversation. But um, now I'm sidetracked. I start talking about love and like I'm all <laughs> flustered. <laughs> I was I know yeah, how funny. I, no, I was talking about uh, we were talking about partners and partners, hard yes. to find the right partners. So uh, B two B entrepreneurs, listen, listen, listen. It's hard to find the right person immediately, but you also have to learn how to delegate and let it go. You have to let your team make mistakes. Maybe they made a grammar mistake. Maybe they didn't meet a deadline. You know, you, it depends on how hard nosed you are. But those people have to grow with you right? Your team grows with you and you have to, you know, I, I have people that say, I want to work with you, right? It's just like a lead, like a lead magnet, be who you are, be authentic and be forgiving. Cause I've seen some hard nosed people. I've worked for them in corporate America and it sucks. And I don't want to be that person. No. Right. So to your point, it just takes a little bit of time to find the right person, but also be able to like fire them if it's not working. Yeah, it, it's they'd say, you know, fire. What is it? Uh, hire slow, fire fast. Yes. Yes. The, the motto. For sure. Kiss a lot of frogs and work and <laughs> work and love. All right. So I will let you go, Chella. Thank you so much for being here. You're coming live from Toronto. Or yes, what? yes, I okay. am. And thank okay. you for having me. This was a blast. So it's the delay. That's okay. It was worth it. Everybody's going to love it. They're going to reply. You know, we're going to reposition the show. So you guys, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much. We are now adding to our email uh, campaign, past episodes, future episodes, what's going on now where, you know, we're learning and we're growing. Once again, if there's a subject you need to learn, if there's something that we're not delivering, um, to let me know because this show is for you. This show is for you to actually thrive in the new normal. So stay put for just one second, Chala. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to you and you guys just have a fabulous rest of the week.